Our second speaker is Kathy McMahon from Sump Memorial Library. And um, she's the youth, youth services manager at that library, which is in Papillion, Nebraska. Kathy's going to present today, Teens, Gotta Love Them. Love that title. Kathy will turn you on to great ideas for structuring an exciting teen advisory group. She will show you what it looks like and what her library considers a successful teen program, which might be different than you think. Kathy will also share ideas on how to create a successful summer, summer reading program. Let's give a warm welcome to Kathy. Mm -hmm. Hi. This kind of freaks me out. <laughs> um, hang on. Um, I only have just a oh, I don't know about this. Um, I'm going to have to walk a little bit, okay, so I'll come back every so often. So you just hang on. Okay, here we go. Much better. Wait, excuse me, excuse me, Mrs. Oh, Christian. No, wait, wait, no, no, no. I can't hear me, can me. You need to stay in front of the camera near the microphone because nobody out remotely can hear you. You're going to have to stay right there. I'm sorry. Hey. Yeah. I the microphone can't pick you up if you move any farther away from that. Yeah, you can lay your paper there. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, I have issues with that. You'll be fine. Okay, mm -hmm. here we go. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> Jake, it's hard. It's hard for me to do what I'm told. I am the Youth Services Manager at Sump. I have been there for three years. Previous to that, I was in Fremont for two years and five months or six months, something like that. Um, my teen programs run way differently than even Laura's does or Jake's does or anybody's does. I don't do um, uh, programming as you guys think it is. I do, my programs are all built on volunteer opportunities that they can do. When I started this position three years ago, I inherited four teens. One that could draw amazing, two that only wanted to play card games, and one that kind of had an attitude. Well, the one that had an attitude left probably two weeks after I started because I have an attitude too, and she had an attitude, and our attitudes didn't mesh well. So she's gone, Hannah's gone, um, and is now in college. Um, my two that wanted to play card games, I didn't quite understand why they wanted to do this, so we had lots of conversations, and it was just some place for them to go after school um, to be comfortable. And so the card game thing went away, and then the graphic artist girl that I had still did my bulletin boards and still kind of hung around with me after school. But, but Tony had a, and, and I love Tony, Tony had a very rigid, I met it, I met, um, she meets with them, she met with them on Mondays at 4 o'clock for only one hour and they had a, an agenda and I don't roll like that so it was really hard for me to understand why these kids were coming every Monday and, you know. So, I decided to restructure it so it fit my lifestyle and my, the way I, the way I operate. So I said to them, I said, I, I'm not going to be pulled off the floor after school when we do, I'm not kidding you, hundreds of readers advisory questions after school every day. So we're going to have to make this work for both of all of us. So I started recruiting kids that were there at the library after school to become my teen volunteers. And those four, unfortunately, all kind of drifted away because they didn't like how I did things, and, and that was fine. They were old enough to get jobs and do that kind of stuff, so that worked well. So I started recruiting my own volunteers, and it worked really well because I literally would walk up to a table of kids after school and say, hey, you need to work for me. You need to come over and cut some stuff, and you need to shelve some books, and you need to do this. And, you know, 50% of what I asked came, and, and it worked really well. Well, then I got too many, and I didn't know what to do with them, so I had to, you know, you know relax a little bit and, and not have them uh, have so many of them. So I've now structured it in three years to I have, and I even wrote down my numbers, I have 16 volunteers per week that come every day after school. 
I have a group that come on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I have none that come on Friday because most of the time they're picked up right after school and not drop, you know, don't walk down to the library because it's a weekend. Um, and then I also have 70 summer reading volunteers, which are 70 different ones than the 16s that I have. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. So my 16 kids come down. They check in. There's a little box. They have to log in. I have told them several times, several hundred times, that if they want me to write a recommendation for them on the hours that they serve and what they've done for me, they have to keep track of that. I'm not their mama, and I'm not their housekeeper, so they have to do this stuff themselves. Some of them are really good about it. Some of them have come to me later on and said, well, I don't know how many hours I worked, and I pretty much tell them you got so sad because I'm not, I'm not the keeper of the books. I'm not keeping track of their hours. They're old enough to do this. So on Mondays, I have kids that can come in, that will come in, and some of them only want to shell. Some of them only want to cut crafts. Some of them only want to dust. Some, so what my point of this is, is I find the activity or the job or the task whatever word you want to use, to fit the kit, to fit the team. I have been very honest with them and have said, if you don't like to cut, don't cut my crafts, because I am crazy about how nice my stuff looks and it has to be on the line, and I'm kind, of, I'm kind of insane about that. So if you don't cut well, please don't say you want to cut crafts, because you'll butcher it, and I'll be mad, and I'll have to make more, you know, run more copies, and that'll, 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 yeah, that'll make me crazy. So and you don't want to do that. So don't cut if you don't want to cut. If you only like to dust or you only like to wipe books down with antibacterial wipes, OK, that's what you can do. I structure my teen program totally different than most teen librarians do. Mine is not about having all these clubs and all of this fun stuff. Mine is all about service, all about volunteering, all about giving back to your community and your library, specifically your library. Um, tons of them are involved in sports, and so we work around that. Tuesday, I have a girl that comes in and only wants to put out my new materials. So I hold the cart back, and she puts out my new materials and makes beautiful displays. Has time to do it, does a much better job than I would take time to do. Um, Wednesday, I have nine girls that roll in. Just happens to be all girls on Wednesdays, and three of them only want to cut and the rest want to do physical things in the department. So I have had to ask my director for permission for them to be in my back office. If you've ever been to some, my, I sit at the front at a desk in the youth services department, but all my stuff is in the back room. Um, and so they, they can work back there, and they can you know stamp and sticker and label and you know do whatever it is they need to do, stuff bags, count things, whatever it is. Um, and so I have nine of those that come in on Wednesday. And they are the most loyal nine I have. They are there. They will come in during breaks, like Christmas break and Easter break and or spring break, and um, they'll come in. And what I like about my teens, um, there's several things. But what I what I really like is they own their their relationship with me. They will. They're very responsible in there, and and they're sassy and they're fun and they're you know they're teens, but they really want to be there, or they wouldn't be there because I'm not giving them anything in return. I'm not giving them a, a, a club of any kind or a after school, whatever you want to call it. I don't do that. I don't, that's not how I roll. So that's very, that would be very hard for me to facilitate. Um, twice a year, I give them a pizza party. We stay in the, in the library after hours, and we have pizza, and we watch um, movies. And we inevitably watch movies Kathy wants to see that hasn't watched. So we watched Iron Man and Sherlock Holmes. And, <laughs> And they didn't fuss. They didn't fuss at all. Last um, in March, um, the, a couple of weeks ago, we had one night, um, and uh, we watched Disney movies. We watched four Disney movies, and four Disney movies I had not seen. I'm not a movie watcher, so uh, so. But they never fuss, and that is to thank them for working for me for all year, for all school year. And then at the end of the summer, at the end of my teen program this summer, we will have a movie night where we'll have pizza brought in and food, like lots of food, and, and we'll watch movies. And that's the only two programs I do for my teens. The rest is all about what you can do for me and what I can get out of you is truly what it is. So when they come in after school, week after week after week after week, and have been doing this for three years, they obviously want to be there. There's obviously something that, they, that they're getting out of it. 
So for this presentation, I asked them, and when we went to, when I took two of my teens to Legislative Day, I told them just the blanket statement, you just say, do whatever Kathy tells you to do and you'll be fine. And that's all you have to say to these adults that come up and shake your hand because they've got um, awards for being volunteers through Legislative Day. And so we joke about that, but they really, truly, honestly want to be there or they wouldn't be doing this for three years and, and, and not expecting anything out of it. You know, it's, it's usually a what, what's in it for me mentality, and that's not how these kids work. And so my teen program rolls, um, rolls really well, I think. Um, so after they come in and after they get settled and they, they do their job, they consistently ask for more things to do. And I think that's how I've grown my program. You know, it's not, it's not at all stagnant. Um, it is, I've got new teens all the time. I have new applications that, that parents are turning in. It's not a, it's not a, I have a core group of tab kids that I'll talk about, but my teen volunteers after school are growing all the time because I think um, they feel welcome and um, I advocate for teens um, a lot, um, as we all should do. They all have something to offer. We just need to figure out what that is with what we have that needs to be done, and we put those two things together, and I think it works really well. I know a lot of libraries do, you know, host those, those clubs and stuff, and that just does not, I have tried several times to have a cooking club and a book club and, you know, you name it, I've tried it, um, gaming and all sorts of stuff, and my teens and, and that I'm working with do not want that. And they've said, Kathy, don't waste your money on that, don't ask for funds for that, let me just come in and work for you. So my teen program looks and smells and tastes way different than most teen programs do. When we get to summertime, I host it a little bit differently. I do a little bit differently um, than I do in the summertime. They have to come to um, a mandatory um, orientation, um, usually in May. Are we okay? Um, and um, they have to hurry here about my dress code. They have to hear about my expectations. They have to hear about what my director expects out of them. Um, they usually have a job to do when they get there, stamping the, the coupons or whatever. Um, so with my summertime, with my kids in the summertime, they fill out an application. I don't turn anybody away. In the school year, I do. When I've got, when I've got my fill of what I need after school, I say, why don't you contact me in the summer? But my summertime, I'll take them off. So. Um, last year, I went and talked to two of the middle school, two of the grade schools, the sixth graders, and asked them to come and be my team volunteers to build my core group of kids for after school. And that was probably one of my biggest mistakes of my career because I had thousands of kids, I had hundreds of kids from two big schools, um, and I took them all. We buy T-shirts for the kids to walk in the parade. They're allowed to walk in the parade if they work for me. And so I had to hurry up and, you know, call up, start, and order several hundred more T-shirts. Um, I think every teen in Papillion probably has that beneath the surface black T-shirt that we had last year. <laughs> yeah, because I had to buy a lot of those. Um, so they'll come in, and I run my summer part where they have to sign up for a two-hour shift. My after-school kids can kind of roll in when they're done with school and done with their, their activity or their homework or whatever. So that's a little less structured. My summer is structured like crazy. They start at 9, they have a two-hour shift from 9 to 11, 11 to 1, 1 to 3, 3 to 5, and 5 to 7.30. If you sign up for that shift, unless you're dead or I hear from your parent, you by God better be there because I'm counting on you to, to man that table, to man our reading table. I usually pick my newbies for that, the new 7th graders going in because they can handle passing out the reading logs and they can handle giving the, you know, the stuff away. Um, the ones that have been there now for three years, will run, will help me run my programming. So they'll know how to set up my tables in my kids' room. They'll know how to go get stuff in the back office to, you know, to pull out or whatever. They're, they're extremely good at alphabetizing and shelving and straightening my department. Last summer we had um, a daycare come in, um, and that was another mistake of my career. <laughs> but, um, they came in every Wednesday after we had our big presenters, and there was 40 of them and one of me, and they probably pulled every book I had in my youth services department off the shelf every week. So I had to figure out how to get that stuff back on there. 
um, it was it was trashed. And but they just didn't understand the whole process of once you're done with the book, pie, make a pile instead of just leaving it everywhere. So my teens, the ones that that I had taught how to shelve, had trained how to shelve, reshelved all of that stuff every Wednesday, and we had carts and carts and carts and carts of stuff. So my kids can alphabetize like most master's librarians because they, they did a really good job with that. But so I now have, I will have 70 plus summer reading volunteers. Um, if you work six hours for me during the summertime, which is the first three weeks in June, um, you earn your t-shirt and then you are allowed to walk in the parade with a parental you know, permission slip. Um, when we walk in the parade, they carry big, huge, inflatable, fun toys from Nobbies, and they throw, you know, stuff. And we don't throw candy. We're not allowed to in Papillion throw candy. Um, yeah, so, we, but, you know, we can't, but other places can. So we um, have partnered with, um, our director, Robin, has partnered with the um, Lions Club, and we give away books. And so we give books to all the kids, and all of my teens have stamped those books, um, that have said, you know, donation from blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's really, they really, they really want to walk in that parade because, you know, they're, it's the biggest parade in the state, I believe, and it's huge. So everybody's there, their parents, their grandparents, their aunts, their uncles, every kid in school is there. So the parade is a big deal in Papillion. So once we get the parade all done, we kind of settle into a routine of your schedule and what you need to do. And then we kind of branch off into, if you're kind of tired of sitting at the table, I'll show you how to do something else if you're interested. I've had several kids say, I really just want to read. So I said, well, then this sitting at the table, sitting at the reading table is the job for you. Because if there's not a kid standing there needing a reading log or needing you know, a, a trinket, uh, um, you can read all you want. And that has been the best, that has been the, the, the nicest thing for me to see is because they are reading. They're, they're literally going to the shelves. And I'll, they'll say, well, what have, you, what have you read? And so we'll have, you know, discussion, great book discussions on stuff that I probably never would have talked about had they not been in the library, you know, that, they, that we haven't made that connection or, or made that relationship. Um, I want to ask you some questions. Um, how many of you actually have teen groups, teen tab groups in your um, library? And how many do you have? Where are you at? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sarah? And, and, and that's a core group that you have that meets once a month, or is this just kids that come in? Okay. Anybody else? Our young adult librarian has mm -hmm. a very active. Yeah, he does. He, yeah, he totally rocks that. Um, my question to you, and if you, if you take nothing else away from this today, um, I think that you need to think about what you want your teens to accomplish. Do you want them to feel growth and do you want them to feel comfortable and do you want them to you know grow with you and learn with you and 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 become a, an advocate for the library because they're they're some of our best um what do you want um you need to ask yourself what you want your teens to accomplish i can tell you very vividly very blatantly what i need my teens to do but what I get back from my teens is way more um, relationship-wise than what I give them. I give them, you know, five or six minutes, hey, how was your day, how's that boy you like, blah, 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 that kind of stuff, you know, let me see your text, because they always show me their text when they're talking to some boy, some new boy, you know, um, which is kind of interesting, the way, they, <laughs> the way they chat now. I'm like, well, I said, does your mama know what this you're saying? Because, you know, I'm a pretty open person, but well, I wouldn't want my daughter talking that way. But anyway, so. I digress. Um, um, so I want you to think about that. So if you only need four teens to do a job, then don't go out and get 60 kids because it's, it's the, the, prog the, the whatever project you have or whatever event you want to do is going to fail because you just got too much, too much help, too many, you know, too many cooks in the kitchen kind of thing. My next question was, is you need to make sure that your, or my next statement is, you need to make sure your volunteers fulfill a need. For them just to come in and hang out is not a need. That's not a need on your part, and that's not a need on their part. If they're coming to use the library after school to study, that's the need. Do you see, do you see where I'm going with this? My teens fulfill thousands of needs every single day when they roll in. Yesterday I was going to a, 
ribbon cutting down in downtown Papillion, and six of the nine that came in had already had the stuff set up, was doing my project when I got back. They already knew. So they knew the need that I had, and they fulfill a need because I have stuff to do, and it's only one of me, and it's you know 17 of them, 16 of them a week. So they, need to, they know what they need to do. They know to fill the slots in the picture books. They know to put the rookie readers out. They know to straighten the magazines. They know, they know to make my department look pretty you know, for the afternoon after we've had several hundred kids in there during the day for our running programming. So, <laughs> no, never mind. I own them. Um, and then the next, the next part I want to talk about is um, I think you need to understand um, what you're giving to them is much more emotionally what they need than what you probably realize. Um, all of my kids will tell me, and they'll tell you if you ever came to the library and asked them, they'll tell you that Kathy is non-threatening, Kathy doesn't hold a curfew over my head, Kathy isn't grading me. So I'm a non-threatening adult that gives them, you know, gives them five minutes of my day or ten minutes of my day and they get back so much because I treat them with respect. I have extremely high expectations of my teens, and I have asked a few, um, three and three years, one a year about, um, to not come back. And I've had conversations with moms on the phone. My director knows all of this. This is not like under the table, not, you know, it's, I've worked with them, worked with them, worked with them. I'll tell you a story. I had a girl from last September, a year ago, till this January, so you know, a little over a year, been telling her parents that she had been coming to my library and working. I didn't know the girl, didn't know her name, didn't know what she looked like, so the dad walked in one day and said, you know, I'm here to pick up my daughter, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> walk around the library, I don't care, do what you want to do, you know. Um, and he says, no, Sammy's, Sammy's volunteering for you, and I said, I don't have any Sammy that volunteers for me. And the look on his face was priceless. Because guess what? He's got a lot more issues than I do of Sammy not volunteering. He's got to figure out where his kid's been for the last year and several months. Um, so it got to be, it was, it was icky. It was sad. She didn't, she didn't know how to approach me. She had told her parents that she had been volunteering for Kathy. Well, my name's all over that, you know, all over the youth services department. If you, you, that's easy to pick up. That's an easy thing to figure out. Um, and so we had to call in. We sat in the director's office and we had a chat with, expectations and lying and all of that stuff. Um, she had to write a letter of apology. Her parents made her do that. Um, the dad was all on board about making her own this. The mom, not so much. So we struggled. She struggled at home. She struggled in school for a while with it. And I just told her, I said, this is on you. I would have loved to have had you be a volunteer after school. But when you don't come up to me and say that you want to be a volunteer and I don't have a form filled out, you know, that the parents signed off on, that they know that the kid's going to be there Mondays from 3.30 to 4.30. I, I don't know what to do about that. That's not my problem. I mean, that's not on me. And she's like, well, I didn't, I didn't know how to approach you. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm the most approachable person there is, so that's not, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let her use that as an excuse. And she struggled for a while, and they made her come in um, over the summer um, and work several hours, and it was brutal. So my next thing is, is don't take them if they don't want to be there. Because it was really hard. It was hard on her. It was hard on me. It was hard on her parents. I felt really bad for her parents. Um, excuse after excuse after excuse. And that wasn't what she needed to know. She needed to own that she had made a mistake, apologize, and then we needed to move on. And we could never move on. We could never get to that move on point. So she um, started at eighth grade. Um, and really struggled with even coming into the library after school and was embarrassed. And she learned a life lesson, I think. Um, I felt really bad for her, and I felt really bad for her folks. But she's the one that did it to herself, so she needed to, you know, it was tough. It, that was, that's been my worst experience, and that's not even that bad. So, you know, all is good, I think, in my life. So, um, ways they can participate. I have two girls that come in on Wednesdays and build my um, book carts. You know, we use Baker and Taylor pr pretty much exclusively. And so I go through all the catalogs and I circle everything. And they do all my data entry, which saves me hours at my desk. Um, a lot of cutting, a lot of um, shelving, a lot of straightening, um, a lot of just maintenance of my department. 
Um, I think the best part of all of this has been the relationships that they have built through me. I'll tell you another story, okay. and then I'll probably be just pretty close to being done. Um, except I have something I want to read to you. Um, one of, we, have, we hosted, um, we're one of the host sites for UNO's College of Education, and we have students that come in every semester and observe what a, what a public librarian does, and a story time or an event or a program. And I had one of the times they could sign up for was one of my Saturday literacy events. So I had six UNO students that Saturday, and then I had 17 teens come in, and they manned the stations, you know, um, Princess and Pirate Bowling and Princess and Pirate Snack. And, you know, we, we do it every month. It just t theme changes, but not the activities. Um, so I had my teens set up the stations, um, Princess and Pirate Obstacle Course. And so, yeah, it, it's pretty lame, but it works. Um, <laughs> and it works really well because it runs itself now. So. So my teens are doing all of this, and one of the UNO students is in the craft room. And if you've been to South, I have a, a glassed-in room that's really nice, and that's where we do our crafts and our snacks. Um, and they're they're literally doing their own thing. The UNO students are doing what they're what they were told to do and what they're supposed to do. And and um, one of the moms came a week later of my teens and said. Do you realize the impact that you have on kids? And I said, yeah, sometimes it's not so good, but OK. <laughs> sometimes I probably have to rein back my emotions a little bit. But um, she said, no, one of the UNO students, and this is kind of, this is kind of, kind of makes me cry a little bit. One of the UNO students had told the girl, now she's 13, just in middle school, how important college is. And because Allie was kind of leaning towards, you know, I didn't know if I wanted to go to college. This UNO student, because we collaborative worked with another, you know, entity, made Allie decide that maybe college is not a bad thing, and maybe grades are something I need to work for. That would never have happened if I had not had the perfect storm, if I had not had the teens and the UNO students and a literacy event all at once. So that stuff is pretty, that stuff is kind of what defines us as librarians, I think, how we can put people together and the right things together at the right time. That's pretty much, pretty much what defines us. Um, I want to read something to you that I found. Um, a lot of people use those 40 developmental assets. Um, I use bits and pieces of them. Um, and I believe in some of them, and I don't believe in others. But, but I found this on their website. And I think this is important kind of to describe how I feel my teens are. It says, everyone agrees that relationships matter. But what is it about relationships that matter? Why are some relationships transformative for young people's development and success, while others have little, of, of, if any, impact? How can we articulate and measure the intangible dimensions of relationships so they can become both credible and actionable in the realms of policy and practice? I think that teen talking to that adult at that time drives home this point. It says, uh, the Search Institute and others have shown that the number of intensity of high quality relationships in the young people's lives is linked to a broad range of positive outcomes, including increased student engagement, improved academic motivation, better grades, higher aspirations for the future, civic engagement, and more frequent participation in college preparatory classes and activities with a variety of other individual outcomes. This is the best sentence of the whole paragraph. We also know that high quality relationships are char characterized by caring, supportive, meaningful, reciprocal, and resulting in a young people's sense of agency, belonging, and competence. And I think that that, that literally drives home, um, kind of defines my, my teens. We get, they give to us, we give to them. We give to them in such small measures that it's really hard to, to know if we've made a difference or if it's, if it's at all swayed them one way or another, and then, you know, it's one of those MasterCard moments where it's priceless and everything fit together really well. And, and don't give up on your teens. If you have four, you have more. I mean, that's four than you had before. So, and I started with four, and now I have 16 regular ones. My tab group is different. Now, my tab group I run the first Thursday night of the month. I have 27 of them that will come crazy come. Um, they, and they don't even want food. They just want to come and hang out at the library, talk about books, talk about the next literacy event. They make fun of my literacy events now. Oh, I suppose we're going to do Mickey Mouse bowling. Or, oh, I, you know, and it gets, I'm like, okay, if you guys can come up with something better, knock yourself out. So, you know, <laughs> I think my stuff's pretty good. So, you know, whatever. But, um, 
so they'll, they'll set that up, they'll get that ready for me, they'll roll in on a Saturday morning. Um, what's really funny is when we have a literacy event, Mary Matichewski, my assistant, will read the stories and then we kind of just go off and, you know, talk to the parents and stuff. And every one of those parents will tell those teens, gosh, this is really nice that you're here on a Saturday morning at 10 o'clock and helping Kathy and Miss Mary out and blah, blah, blah. So the relationships that we build with those teens are huge. I, I, I can't tell you the impact that we, ha that we have made or that, that is, is important to them um, other than just sharing the stories with you. Um, do you guys have any questions? I'm kind of done early, but that's okay. No questions? Maybe it's not, not okay. I have a good question. Um, Thank you, Nancy. I'm stepping away from <laughs> <a> minute. <laughs> uh, I took over the Mead Library mm -hmm. um, about a little over a year ago now. Um, and Mead is a very, very small town. It's just a little over 500 people. <laughs> and, I mean, my summer reading program last year, the first one that I did, um, I was really amazed. I had 44 kids, um, which yeah. is awesome. And we have 44 in, like, one baby play. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just, I just but, had to put that out there. Our little town. Yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's yeah. amazing. And we just told people, okay, my problem is getting the older tweens and the teens to come in and do, what would you recommend for me just to try? And you've gone to the schools, and you've I asked them to be an active that. member of your library. Uh, I have done okay. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think you have to, I think... The, I, I, this will be my second annual next month. I'm doing a teen tween fashion party. Ooh, and I have a good turnout. I want to come to that. Last year I had 16 girls come. Yeah. But, and so then we talked during the fashion party. He goes, because my girlfriend that manages this uh, fashion place in Fremont brings a whole bunch of clothes. And we hang them up on the book racks. And, you know, because I'm hoping that as they look at the clothes, they also see books. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's that's too and, much to hope yeah. for. <laughs> and she sold out three hundred dollars for the clothes that day. She'll let them buy them. I mean, they can try them on or whatever. They don't have to buy anything, but she sold out three hundred. So, and over half of them said, "Oh yeah, you know, give me the phone number, give me a call. I'll come in if you need some help. You know, with the story time or something like that." Try and call and. I have not been able to get a single one of the Really? Oh, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, so I mean, it's just a splendid. Well, and I, don't, and I don't take no for an answer. So I, I just kept asking those tables of kids after school. I just kept saying, you guys just probably need to work for me. Take this application home to your parents. Do, you know, I just, I'm pushy that way. So I don't, you know, I don't know. I think you have to keep trying. I think you have to keep, keep working at it because I think it will turn around. You know, I when I when those four left when I first started, I kind of thought, man, I'm host for bulletin boards and cutting stuff. I mean, the the physical, what we call grunt work that that we don't have time to do, um, and now they've taken over all of that. But it's taken me three years to get it there. So don't give up. That's my free advice. Don't give up. Yeah. It, it, would it be better for me to maybe start with more of the older tweens and work with them through junior high and up? And yeah. Do you do you have a policy that says that your volunteers can only be a certain age, though? No. Because uh, mine. They have to be twelve. Oh, okay. 12. So they can be fifth graders or sixth graders. Right. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. now during the summer reading camp, our, we do ours. We call it a summer reading camp, mm -hmm. and they come every day for a week from ten in the morning till noon. Wow. Yeah, and then, and then that's that's our summer. That's reading. a lot of work. Wow. Really? Uh, one of the special ed teachers at the high school comes, and my friend's group pays her $100 to come for the week. And I'll do it for 75 <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Uh, so, no, it, it went real smooth last year. Um, and then I had a couple of other Maybe they don't relate library with volunteering with something other than summer reading. Maybe they only put it together with summer reading. Because, you know, my 70 that come in the summertime are not the same ones I have all year. They, they put it together. They, they think of it differently. Like, and a lot of them, to be honest, when I started three years ago there, a lot of them was like, my mom's making me do this. And I'd say, oh, then you need to be, you need to want to be here, bud, or it's not going to work. And 
you know, so maybe they don't put together year round. I don't know, Nance. I don't. I don't really know the answer to that. Sweet. I'm done. I'm done my job. <laughs> And even if you get two or three, right. you don't want 70. No, well, no. I mean, you, you know, not three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, mean, I, I just need two or three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I would try. But, Did you talk but about I, diverse languages? Oh, I do. No. Um, our, mm, sometimes. I don't really know how to answer that. Um, I do a book club at our alternative high school. We tried a couple of years ago to build an ambassador program to where they would come in and be able to leave the building um, and come in and work for me for an hour or so. And we never could get the logistics figured out of how they were to travel, you know, because these kids are at risk. And if they're out of the building, they may not come to the library. Once they're out of the building, they may go home or somewhere. Um, so we are still we are still working on that. We do take my adult services person um, does take the um, court ordered ones, but they are adults. Um, we don't we don't dabble in that much, but I don't I don't know how much of that we have. Um, I mean, there are naughty kids in Papillion, There's no doubt about it. But I don't know I don't know how much they what they do within the schools to keep to keep them busy there. Does that make sense? I don't, yeah. I've had a couple of them, um, and one of them, he was so cute. He tried so hard. Well, you can't wear earphones. You know, you can't be, you know, you have to be working. You know, we can't wear earphones, so I wish that they would. And he'd inevitably stick one in and stand. We have one place where our camera doesn't show. He'd stand in that corner, you know. Oh, <laughs> like, come on, buddy, you got a quick job. Yeah, no, you got to go. So I had to call the principal, and he just didn't, he just, he didn't want to be there. He was forced to be there. He didn't understand why he couldn't be jamming to his music, and and you know, and all we had him do was dust, and he couldn't even do that. So it was like, oh, yeah. dang, you know. So I don't, I don't, we don't, no. And he did not want to be there. You know, my kids want to be there. I mean, my my teens will tell you they'll walk. I told somebody at this ribbon cutting yesterday they'd walk across some hot coals buck naked for me if I asked them to, because they like me and I like them, and I and I push for services for them, and you know. So I do. I love. I love those kids. And if I had a choice between, I probably shouldn't put this out um, publicly. But if I had a choice between doing a toddler time and a teen program, I'd pick a teen program every single time. Teens are kind of where my heart is and where my passion is. I just I have to do the other ones too. And I like the other ones. It's just teens are fun. Teens are. You never know what you're going to get. You never know what's going to come out of their mouth. Or what's on their phone or, you know, that's been an eye-opening experience. So. But but they you know they. You know, and I have the moms come in and thank me for you know having them hang out with me after school. And I think they say, "Oh, I just hang out with Kathy." They work. They don't just come in and stand at my desk for two hours. I don't have time for that. So, you know, we work and talk at the same time. You know. So, anything else? Oh, dang it! Mine have to start in. in they. Oh, repeat the question. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, what was your question? <laughs> oh, what age do I start them? What age do I start? Yeah. I am not good at this technology stuff. So. Um, mine have to be going into seventh grade. That's the only criteria I have. They have to be going into seventh grade. So, so I get twelve-year-olds. I have two, four, eighteen-year-olds. Um, you know, they roll in for special projects. I have two that will come in every fourth Thursday of the month and do my bulletin boards because they're big. They're tall kids and they can climb up on my you know, on my stuff, and I don't have to worry about them falling off, or, you know, um, yeah, so, fall grade, seventh grade, yeah, is that a little unusual? I don't think so, no, I think it's okay, works for me, but, <laughs> I don't know, I don't have any kids, so, yeah, I think 12 is pretty, pretty normal, pretty yeah. yeah, do you, does she, does he or she, does he want to come volunteer, <laughs> you're in Bellevue, you're close, he totally should be working for me, um, anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yay.